Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Variable Action Heroes One Piece Shanks figure, which is one that I know many people are very excited about, and it does look pretty cool. Uh, you know how Mega House has been kind of... Yeah, they've been a little hit or miss with this line. He, This guy's kind of a, a miss in some ways, unfortunately, but he does do some things pretty well, so we're going to talk about all of that. So let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about 20 centimeters, which makes him roughly just shy of 8 inches, so it definitely has some size to him, pretty much standard for the VAH figures. He's probably slightly taller than your average male, so that's about right scale-wise. First thing I noticed on this guy is the paint is pretty darn good. They did a lot of gray shading throughout the white shirt, and that looks pretty nice. And then the skin tone and shading on the skin looks very nice as well. The pattern on the pants is very clean. Same thing for the hair on his legs. They did a really good job. And then for his sandals, most of the sandals are actually a separate mold, so there's no paint issue at all on there. Uh, the faces are nice and clean and the hair has nice shading, so the paint job on this guy is definitely successful. Looks really nice. Same thing's true for the cape, which we'll, we'll show you in just a minute. Now, as far as accessories go, this guy has three different faces. We have the one, it looks kind of like a neutral face with a little bit of like a smirk. Then we have one angry face and then one face that looks like he's laughing. We have one fist hand, one gripping hand, one hand that goes on the bottom of the sword, and then one style pose hand. Nothing for the left side. Then we do have his sword with a uh, an interchangeable scabbard. The it doesn't the blade doesn't actually go in the scabbard. They're separate pieces. And we have a little speech bubble, which is kind of useless unless you happen to have one of the variable action heroes display stands. Then lastly, we have his cape, which we're going to actually talk about in a little bit of detail. Photo won't just do for this. So the cape does look nice. There's a lot of black shading in the purple, which makes it look really cool. Uh, there is a little bit of grayish blue shading on the black, but it's a little less uniform than I'd like. You can see, maybe you can see, I don't know. They're kind of like just spots where there's no shading at all and it looks kind of weird. But it's not bad. Since it's black, it doesn't require too much and I think that's okay. Now the interesting thing about this is the back is hinged, but it's a very loose hinge, so it's kind of useless. And this piece right here is glued in place. And this piece right here is glued in place. The only real articulation we have other than that hinge is kind of a swivel for this piece. So ultimately, it's only going to sit on his shoulders, and you're going to just be able to adjust it a little bit. And you're going to have to kind of wedge his sword through this gap right here uh, if you want to have his sword in his belt, which is almost necessary based on how they sculpted his belt. So it's both a good and bad accessory. Good because it kind of looks cool while it's on, but bad because it didn't get executed very effectively. Now as far as the figure itself, like I said, it does do a lot of things really nicely and some things really terribly. The first thing is the neck articulation. The neck itself is on a ball peg, so that's really good. You can move that around pretty effectively and it helps in posing the head. But the articulation for the head is a ball hinge that has no swivel at the top. So we're back to that problem. The head is connected to that permanently and so you only get the hinge. You can't rotate it on top of the hinge. And then the bottom part of the ball hinge that does or is supposed to swivel in the neck, it's totally stuck. So it's it's very much a problem. His neck is not great. Maybe yours will be better, but even if it does function as they intended, not having a secondary swivel on that ball hinge renders it very ineffective. It's it's impossible to use that ball hinge effectively without a hinge. Or without a swivel, I mean. So Disappointed in that. For the shoulders, we have a ball peg that moves around in the socket, but then we also have the butterfly joint that lets the whole thing move around, so that's really nice. We have a little bit of a vertical right here, but that's really just from the ball peg, and this is just a cap. You don't really get a hinge out of that, so it just, it just makes it look nice. Which is fine, I think that's cool. I'm glad that they're doing the shoulders the way they are. So then you also have your ball hinge for raising the arm, and that works just fine. And of course you have your full rotation. The elbow articulation is only on this side. And I don't, they keep changing their articulation. It's like they don't know what they wanna do. And it's just, it's just not great. It's not good. It's a, it's a fixed hinge down here, and then it's a swivel hinge up here. So you have a double hinged elbow, which is fine at the bottom, it's very effective, but at the top it's incredibly tight. I can barely even move it. And then it doesn't even go all the way. So I don't know what I don't know what they're doing. It's a very, very, very ugly elbow. And it's not effective. But you do get rotation out of it, so I guess to some extent they were successful. I don't know. It's like it's just really weird and ugly, so I don't like that. And then you have your standard ball hinge for the wrist, which is just fine. For the torso 
uh, single ball peg it looks like for the upper torso which moves around pretty well side to side front and back's not too bad a little bit of rotation doesn't line up though that's kind of a bummer the shirt is narrower down here than up here I know that's a little thing but it's front and center and it doesn't line up so that does not look great for the lower torso it is just a ball peg and you get some range out of it not a ton but probably enough so that's okay and then this piece this piece is a floating hollow soft plastic no problems with that but if you don't set it just right it just it sits weird and it's it's a little ugly but you're gonna have to just kinda make sure it's pulled down and you'll be okay you have to keep his sword in there because he's got a giant gap so that's I mean I guess that's okay because you're gonna wanna keep the scabbard in there anyway but I don't know it feels like they could have executed that somehow cleaner and then this piece doesn't really actually move around so be aware of that then for the hips we can get this out of the way you can see the hips very easily on this guy uh, they have the hinge in there so they can drop down and then you have another hinge for the hip itself and then you have your swivel which is actually a ball peg at the bottom where it connects to the thigh and then you can actually rotate around and if he's like Whitebeard that'll actually come off if you pull on it uh, maybe not so I guess you don't have to worry about that coming off on this guy so that's good but you can see tons of range out of the hips you just might have to move them around a little bit a little bit of finagling but then you get crazy range out of this guy's hips except for going forward they're a little tricky but then you can still do it so you should be able to pose this guy just fine but be aware that this piece will get in the way to a large extent when posing the hips because of how it's sculpted so just be aware of that for the knees let's see how the knees look they look so far good on the bottom and on the top pretty good so yeah they did a good job with his knees I'm very happy about that much better than uh, Whitebeard so that's very nice and then for the ankle we have a true ball hinge so that's nice they've been doing ball pegs a lot of the time on these guys but having a ball hinge on there works very nicely I'm very pleased with that it's a little stiff but it should be okay and then we have a toe hinge which is only okay it's not great but it's definitely good enough so I'll give it to him so not the best figure in the world but it'll do the neck is definitely not great and then this whole area it looks okay once it's posed but it's gonna be problematic for having this big gap in there you're definitely gonna have to leave the sword in there and then that becomes a problem with the cape so it is a little bit of a pain in the ass to pose this guy but ultimately you should be able to get him into a pretty cool pose and it should look pretty cool on your shelf so I'm gonna say I recommend him just have a little bit of reservation and you'll see in the photos how the the sword interacts with the cape it's a little bit of a problem so oh look and by posing the foot it scratched off a lot of paint that's not good so don't maybe use your toe hinge either alright so yeah it's, it's pretty average for this line so I don't know if you like the character get it if you don't don't thanks for watching guys make sure you subscribe to the channel I have new videos up every single day we talk about action figures movies TV shows video games all kinds of fun stuff so make sure you come back for that give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and in the meantime keep collecting <laughs>